Hi, welcome back to the channel and part three in the series about how to customize and maintain your microcap. Last episode, I ran through the radio gear, replaced the Anglin Technics gear with, and also installed servos to replace the Flexnar wire that operated the hoppers. This episode, I'll be rewiring the boat, upgrading the LEDs, and also installing a remote switch so there's no external power button to switch the boat on. So here's what I'll be doing for the boat wiring. Running through the ESCs I'll be using, running through the batteries I'll be using, demonstrating the remote switch and how to wire that up, wiring the boat up, wiring everything to the receiver and also configuring a mix on the radio so that the boat is controlled via a single stick on the transmitter. This is an exact wiring diagram of the boat, but I've also drawn a 2D wiring diagram in CAD that can be downloaded from my Google Drive. I've also drawn a 3D model of the boat in AutoCAD that we'll be using throughout the series to demonstrate other mods. So I'll run through the wiring quickly before moving on to the ESCs and batteries I'll be using. If anyone has AutoCAD, the 3D model of the boat can also be downloaded from my Google Drive. This is also an exact wiring diagram of the boat if anyone wanted to view the wiring in 3D. Links are in the description for both the 2D and 3D wiring diagrams. So the batteries will be wired in parallel. The original wiring for the microcat has two 6 volt lead acid batteries wired in series which provides 12 volts but the capacity of the batteries remains the same. Wiring the two batteries in parallel will keep the battery voltage the same but the capacity will be doubled. This allows for longer run times. Parallel supply then leads to the remote switch that will be used for turning the boat on and off. The ESCs I'm using will be mounted to the bow pumps and the power is provided straight from the remote switch. In order to be able to control all four pump motors with just two ESCs, all four pumps have a permanent live and each of the negative leaves on the pumps are connected to the ESCs. Each yellow ESC wire is connected to the negative wires of the stern pumps and each blue ESC wire is connected to the negative wires of the bow pump. Then it's just a case of plugging each of the ESC wires and the servo leads to the receiver so that the boat can be controlled via the transmitter. So here are the ESCs I'll be using to do the rewiring mod. These are 110 amp brush ESCs that I bought from China. Boat pumps will draw about 10 amps max at full power, so the amperage of these is total overkill. They were originally only rated for 12 volts though, so I upgraded them to run on 4S lithium polymer batteries by swapping out the original 6 volt capacitors to some 25 volt 270 microfarad capacitors instead. The power leads to the ESCs in the boat are fairly long also, so the higher rated capacitors will help with any voltage ripple. I bought these ESCs quite a while ago as spares from my other boat, but it looks like they're now discontinued, so I have found some other alternatives as well. This is an Mtronics Viper Marine 15 HV. The HV stands for high voltage and these can handle up to 24 volts and 15 amps. They're fairly expensive. I bought a pair of these from my other boat for around £65. They are waterproof though and I've never had any issues with them. Another alternative I've found is this 24 volt 30 amp brushed ESC from AliExpress. It's twice as powerful and a third of the price of the Mtronics Viper Marine at just £11.30 per ESC. It's not waterproof though but neither of the ESCs I'm using for the mod. I'd say this is probably the cheapest alternative I could find for what I'm using. Links are in the description for both ESCs and if anyone has any questions drop a comment down below and I'll see if I can help. Before I move on to show you the batteries I'll be using on the boat, I've taken some stats from the standard and heavy duty lead acid batteries you'd normally get with a microcat to do a comparison against some lithium polymer batteries. For the comparison, I've just done some basic maths to calculate the boat's runtime, which is the battery amperage divided by 10 amps of current drawn by the pumps times by 60 minutes. I've applied the same equation to all of these to show the difference between SLA and LiPo batteries. So here's a set of the standard SLA batteries you get with a microcap. These have a runtime around 42 minutes but weigh over 2.5 kilos. And here's a set of similar powered 4S LiPos I use for my other boat. These have a capacity which is 3 amps more than the standard SLA batteries when wired in parallel so it will give you a longer runtime but they're also 1.5 kilos lighter than the standard SLA batteries and have a higher voltage. Here's a set of the heavy duty SLA batteries you get with a microcap. These do have an extended runtime of 72 minutes, but these weigh nearly four kilo per pair. And these are the batteries I'll be using for my boat. These are 4S 16 amp LiPos, which will provide 32 amps when wired in parallel and over three hours of runtime. Put it into perspective, just comparing these to the weight of the standard SLA batteries, for an additional 75 grams of weight, you get an extra two and a half hours of runtime and a higher voltage, which enables the boat to run faster. LiPo batteries do require an element of care though, so there are some downsides to them. You will need a balanced charger, which charges all the cells in the pack equally when being charged, and also a storage option for when they're not in use. It's good practice to keep LiPos at a storage charge when they're being stored, which is around 3.8 volts per cell. LiPos held at their storage charge can remain like this for years, and it will extend the life of the batteries. Also when in storage, I keep the batteries in a metal box and also in fireproof jackets. 
So here's how I put the remote switch together that's going to be used to turn the boat on and off and also a list of the parts I used. 12 volt remote switch, MOSFET trigger switch, depth down module, XT30 connectors, silicon cable, heat shrink tube in, soldering iron and some 6040 solder. I started off by soldering a length of black and red silicon cable to a male XT30 connector for the power to the switch. I then soldered this to the ground and the positive input of the step down module leaving a pigtail on the ground wire so that the remote switch can also be ground. The step down module is used to drop the 16 volts of the LiPo to the 12 volts that the remote switch and other components on the boat will use. I then created another pigtail using the red silicon wire to connect the remote switch to the step down module and also the common and positive rail of the switch. This is the shortest cable connected to the centre of the terminal block. The longer cable is then connected to the voltage out of the step down module. I then hot glued the module to the side of the reload so that it is out of the way and can be kept within the box the switch is kept in. Next I soldered some more of the black and red silicon cable to a female XT30 connector for the power out. The negative wire of this was soldered to the common ground of the remote switch and the positive wire was connected to the normally open terminal block. Then just a quick test to ensure everything was working. As the relay attached to the remote switch is only rated at 10 amps and the boat at full power is likely to draw more than 10 amps, I'm using an additional MOSFET trigger switch to run the ESCs and pumps. This will be turned on by the 12 volts provided from the remote switch. To provide all the boat components with 12 volts, each one will be connected by an XT30 connector, so I soldered up another male connector and soldered that to the positive and ground inputs of the MOSFET trigger switch. Then just gave it a quick test through to ensure everything's working as expected. So here's how I wired the boat up. Each pump on my boat had a capacitor wired in parallel across the positive and negative cables. These are here to reduce the level of electromagnetic interference caused by the brush motors inside the pumps. Some of the older boats may have the pump power cables wound around a ferrite ring which is also used to suppress EMI. Electromagnetic interference or EMI is electrical noise that can affect electrical circuits. A lot of EMI can interfere with the way circuits are intended to be used or PWM signals from the receiver. When stripping my boat out I did lose a capacitor from one of the pumps so I will be replacing all of mine with these non-polarised 25 volt 22 microfarad capacitors. Firstly I snipped off all the remaining capacitors from the pumps and then using the places where the original capacitors were I soldered the new ones on. The soldered area is then insulated with heat shrink tubing. And the capacitor is then fixed to the pump cables with some further heat shrink tubing to hold it in place. I'm using 3mm bullet connectors on the pumps to connect the wires to the ESC so I tinned each of the pump cables ready to be soldered to the bullet connectors. Using a jig I have for soldering, I then soldered the pump cables to the bullet connectors by feeding the solder to the connector whilst holding each of the leads in place. Each connector is then insulated with some heat shrink tubing. Next up, I built the main power leads for the boat using some 12 American wire gauge silicon cable, two female XT30 connectors and a couple of inline fuses. The main power lead is wired so that the battery is in parallel with the XT60 connectors at each end for the batteries. I then spliced two power leads off the main lead. One that goes to the MOSFET trigger switch with a 20 amp fuse in line to switch the power onto the ESC and the pumps and the other that goes to the relay switch with a 5 amp fuse in line to turn the boat on. Next, with some 26 American wire gauge silicon cable and some XT30 connectors, I built a pigtail power lead for power to the MOSFET trigger switch, the LEDs and the sonar on the boat. This was just one male XT30 connector at one end to connect to the output power of the relay switch and three female XT30 connectors that we used to plug the MOSFET trigger switch, the LEDs and the sonar into. These were covered in some black cable sleeving just to keep the cables together and to tidy it up. Then just a quick test through to ensure it's working with two batteries in parallel. And here's where all the wiring will be sitting in the boat when the wiring's finished. Next I've got some heavy duty velcro to fix the ESC to the bow pump. The bottom of the ESCs have one side of the velcro stuck to them and the other side is stuck to the top of the pumps. Then it's just a matter of fixing the ESCs to the top of the pumps. Then I needed a lead that goes from the MOSFET trigger switch to the two ESCs to power those and also a permanent live that goes to all four pumps. 
This was built with some 14 American wire gauge silicon cable, some heat shrink tubing and some more 3mm bullet connectors. There's only one ground wire that goes to each of the ESCs which are tipped with a 3mm female bullet connector for each ESC and then three positive leads for each side of the boat. One for the power to each of the ESCs and two for the pumps on the port and starboard sides of the boat. This then needed to be connected to the MOSFET trigger switch which is what will provide power to the ESCs and pumps when the boat is switched on. Then I connected all the pumps and the ESCs to the lead. The lead's then fixed to the side of the hole using some cable ties to keep it out of the way. Next up is plugging the ESCs into the receiver. ESCs have something called a battery elimination circuit, or BEC, which provides 5 volts from the ESC power to the receiver, effectively eliminating a battery being required to power the receiver. All the ESCs I mentioned earlier have a BEC, but if you were going to look at buying anything different to what I suggested earlier, it's good to look for ones that also have a BEC as it eliminates any additional wiring required to power the receiver. The port ESC is connected to channel 3 and the starboard ESC is connected to channel 2. The servo output for the hoppers is connected to channel 5. Next up is configuring the radio mix to enable the boat to be controlled from a single stick on the transmitter. This is done by going into the mixes tab in OpenTX and selecting channel 2 as the first channel to be mixed. Channel 2 is what's going to be used to steer the boat, so it will need to include inputs from channel 3 and channel 2. This is done by selecting the first input and then copying that and adding it back to the same channel but selecting the other source to be used in the mix. In order to steer the boat, the ESCs will operate in opposite directions so one channel will need 100% weight and the other channel will require negative 100% weight. What this does is whatever input is applied to channel 2, channel 3 will have the opposite input applied and vice versa. The next channel, which is channel 3, will also require a mix, but this channel is going to be used to make the boat go forwards and backwards. So same as what I did for the previous mix, including inputs from channel 3 and channel 2, but instead of applying 100% weight to one channel and minus 100% weight to the other channel, both channels will have 100% weight. What this does is whatever input is applied to channel 2, channel 3 will also have the same value applied, which is what makes the both ESCs operate in the same direction, causing the boat to go forwards and backwards. Once that had been done, I went back to the channel monitor to ensure both channel 2 and channel 3 were operating in the right directions. Here's another view of what the mix looks like in OpenTX when complete. Then just give it a quick test run through to ensure that everything's working as it should. A good way to do this before putting the boat in the water is just to feel for air being pushed out by the pumps you're expecting to be running. And that's it for the main boat power. Again, if you have any questions, drop a comment in the box below and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Next up, here's what I did to rewire the LEDs and a list of what I used to do the mod. Two 5mm white LEDs, two 5mm blue LEDs, one 5mm red LED, one 5mm green LED, some 30 American wire gauge silicon cable, six 470 ohm resistors, some prototype board, heat shrink tubing and an RC dimmer switch. The link's in the description for the RC dimmer switch which I bought from eBay. First off, I cut out six pieces of prototype board for soldering resistors and the LEDs to. These are just six strips of 5x2 board but I split one of the traces on one side of each of the strips with a burring tool on the Dremel for where the resistors will be soldered. You can just solder the resistor straight to the legs of the LED, but I use a prototype board to help with soldering the LED resistor and wiring all together. Then each of the LEDs and resistors are sold to the prototype board strips. Next up, I soldered all the LEDs in parallel using the 30 American wire gauge cable, making sure each colour of the LEDs was in the right place on the boat before soldering everything together. The two larger cables attached to the end of the circuit are for plugging into the RC dimmer switch which will power the LEDs. The strips were then covered in heat shrink tubing to help insulate them when they're in the boat, and I also gave it a quick test through to ensure everything was in the right place and lit up when 12 volts were applied. I then created another lead which had a female XT30 connector on the end to plug into the 12 volts power out from the relay switch which is what will power the LEDs. This is connected directly to the RC dimmer switch with the terminal blocks. 
I also extended the servo cable from the dimmer switch to connect to the receiver. The dimmer switch was then covered in heat shrink tubing to help insulate it. The LEDs were just push fit into place on the boat lid. These will be hot glued in place when I finish the boat. The dimmer switch was then plugged into channel 6 on the receiver and an output was configured in OpenTX to enable one of the potentiometers to control the dimmer switch. So here it is, all wired up and ready to go. I will be tidying up some of the wiring before I put the boat back together, just to make it look a lot nicer, but you could effectively use the boat now if you wanted to seal it up and start using it. You'll just need some 4S LiPo's to fit in the standard Anglin Technics battery compartments and you'll be good to go. Next episode, I'll be modifying the lid to enable easier access to the components inside the boat once it's been sealed back up, whilst also keeping the lid waterproof. So thanks for watching, please like, share and subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. I'm planning on doing more series like this in the future with different boats, so if you have a boat you'd like to see upgraded, drop a comment down below. Also check out my other videos on the channel, these will give you an idea of what you can expect in the coming episodes. Until next time, keep modding.